ready to get you for to go. Hey! Hey! One more time, and... Good morning and welcome to August Messy Church Online. Hope you're all keeping safe and well and have had a, a good month. It's great to be back with you again. And we are actually looking at possibly getting back into the church hall. We're exploring that at the moment and we'll let you know a bit more about that nearer the time. But for next month, we're going to be back online again doing Messy Harvest. So I very much hope you're going to join us. And you can join us later on today at our Messy Church Zoom. The details on the back of your notice sheet. So really pleased to be with you today. Uh, our theme for today is the fruit of the Spirit and if you've got your sheet in front of you um, there's a little bit about the activities and also the Zoom information is on the back sheet too so you can have a look at that um, later on. So for those of you who joined us last month we found out what happened to Paul and his friend Silas when they arrived in Philippi on one of their journeys, how they got into trouble and landed up in prison, and how they escaped when a violent earthquake shook the foundations of the prison. As well as going on long journeys, telling everyone they met about Jesus and getting into trouble, 
Paul also wrote a lot of letters to people who lived in the places he visited. You can read lots of his letters in the Bible. Today, we are finding out about a letter he wrote to the churches in a place called Galatia. And if you look out later on on our video, you'll find, you might find that Arthur and Sylvia tell you a little bit more about where Galatia is. To be honest, Paul was a bit fed up with the Galatians. They were up to all sorts of no good and getting into big trouble. Paul writes a letter to remind them, among other things, that they should be loving each other. He said this, in his letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. So our theme for today is the fruit of the Spirit, those very fruits that we've just been hearing in our Bible reading. And so in your activity booklet, you should have this little activity booklet, lots of fruits on the front. It sets out all of the activities for today. And you'll find that we've got lots of fruity things. So Arthur and Sylvia are going to show you how to make fruity pick pears. Keith and Mary are going to show you how to make a fruit badge. In our science corner, we've got Colin and Liz experimenting with vinegar and balloons and bottles, so that would be really fun. And if you want something tasty to make, you can make your crock crunch with Carrie and Jonah. That's a cucumber that they're going to turn with fruit into a crunchy crocodile, so that should be fun. You've also got Holy, Co Holy Spirit colouring sheep, Frank and Philippa, and Sue is going to make some lovely lemonade for you. So all of those activities are in your book and you can get on with those this morning. We've also got the colouring sheet, that's the colouring sheet. I'll show you that. So that can be coloured in and you can perhaps bring that to your Zoom meeting at four o'clock and show us all the colouring that you've been getting on with. And later on, Robin and I are going to be having a little bit of a chat um, and you'll see us talking a little bit more later on together. So um, that's, the, that's the activities. And now uh, it's time to sing our messy church song. And if you look very carefully, an extra special addition has been made to our video this month. Um, Rose has joined the team online. So if there are still others out there who want to be on the video, it's not too late. You can always send us your video, but do look out for Rose. And thank you so much, Rose, for, for joining us with the video. It's absolutely great. So our God is a great big God. So let's all stand up and stop our song. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And he holds us in his hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And he holds us in his hands. He is higher than a skyscraper. And he's deeper than a submarine. He is wider than the universe. And beyond my wildest 
singing Our God is a Great Big God and did you spot Rose? I hope you did, I hope you looked out for her. So before we begin our activities we're going to say a prayer. So let's just be still. Loving God we thank you so much for our messy church online and for bringing, to, bringing your presence into our homes. Please be with us as we complete our activities and find out more about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's get busy. Hello. It seems such a long time since we've been to Massey Church. My name's Arthur. And I'm Sylvia. And this morning we're looking at St Paul's letter to the Galatians. The Galatians used to live in northern Turkey. They were a Celtic people, but by the time Paul went to see them, they'd become very much like Greek and spoke Greek. So he wrote to them about the fruits of the Spirit. So really, it was like a shopping list of how to be a good Christian. Yes, he listed nine fruits or gifts. So what are we going to do this morning? Well, we could make a game using the fruits of the Spirit. Well, that sounds like a good idea. So what do we need? Well, you need some card, a ruler, a pencil, and some scissors but make sure the scissors are those for cutting paper don't try using mum's dressmaking scissors or you won't be very popular right so i need some card there you are thank you and you've got to divide that up into half for a start like that all right. And the best way is to fold it in half and make a crease. And you open it up and then you can make the lines going across. Right, thank and you. It's probably working out at five centimetres. Right. Just like that. Yes, and then roll it up. Right. And when you've done that, you use the fruits of the spirit to write in each compartment. And you start off Right. Well, that's best done with a felt pen or something like that, isn't it? Well, then it shows up better. Right. So the first one is love. That's right. And I write it over here as well. That's right. And you continue filling the card up with the right um, fruits. And that fills one card up, and then you need another piece of card so that you can just put three on that card. Right. Then, taking the scissors and being very careful, you cut the pieces out. So you end up with just pieces of card. You can, if you wish, decorate the cards oh. by a star, 
and a flower or nothing at all but do make sure you leave the back blank right well i'm not very good at drawing so i'll just put the names on so when you've finished you cut them them out right, right. that's done some so we're then ready to play the game. And you start by placing the cards face down on any surface table or on the carpet. Right. You take a card. Right, so I've picked a card up. And oh. I've picked a card up. Right, so I now try another one. You do? Oh dear, it's not the same. I've got love on one and gentleness. gentleness on the other. So you put one down back on the pile. Right. So. It's my turn now, and mine, I shall use this one, and I have a pair, so I keep those to one side and take another card. Right, it's my turn again now, is it? It is. Right, so let's try that one. Oh dear, I've got love and joy. I'm not very good at this game. So I'll put that one back. So, my turn. And I've got the other love. So, ooh. You're doing very well at this. Just a moment. Sorry. Right, so I will now pick one up. And hooray, I've got two with love on. Well done. So that's my first pair. So you continue in the same manner until all the cards have gone. And then you count up how many you've got and how many Arthur's got and whoever's got the most is the winner. Right, and that's the game. Sounds very good to me. So enjoy playing the game and enjoy making it first of all. Bye. <laughs> The Messy Church theme today is Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The activity and task we have today for you is to make fruit badges. The fruit of the Spirit are nine values. Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. In this activity we are going to make fruity badges and label them with a value of your choice. Mary will demonstrate how you need to make these badges. Now I'm going to show you how to make your badge. You'll need some simple equipment that you have at your home. You'll need some scissors, safety pin, some felt pens, a pencil and some sellotape or other sticky tape and of course some card. You need to choose your value from the fruit of the spirit and there are nine values here for you to choose from and then you need to choose your fruit that you're going to represent your value with. I chose a strawberry Oops. and the value of kindness to make my badge. 
and you need to have go through the stages of actually drawing your fruit. So I drew my strawberry, then I coloured my strawberry in like that. I chose my value of kindness and wrote that in a darker coloured felt pen. So that was my pen that I wrote the word in. And then the next step is to cut your badge out. So very carefully cut round your shape. It's a good idea to have a fairly simple shape. So no stalks and bits sticking out because they're quite tricky to cut round and they break off. The next step is to put your safety pin on the back of the badge so that you can wear it. So open your safety pin and you may need somebody to help you because it's handy to have somebody to hold the pin in place. You need to get your tape and stick your tape over the safety pin like that and then you've got your badge. There's my safety pin on the one that I've made before and then you can wear your badge with pride to show your value. Thank you. Welcome to the science section of Messy Church. Hello, I'm Liz and Colin. Do you believe in God? Of course I do. God the Father? Yeah, God the Father. He's the strength. God the Son? Jesus, he's the helper and the teacher. And God the Holy Spirit. And that's what fills us with all the energy that we need and to do the things we want to do. Today, we're going to see if we can create some spirit. What you will need for this activity is some vinegar, any kind of vinegar, common old vinegar will do. A funnel for putting the vinegar into a plastic bottle and you will also need another plastic bottle so you need two of this small size. Uh, you need a sharp knife. Really important is some bicarbonate of soda which you'll find probably in the cooking cupboard, a teaspoon and really important a balloon. I'm sure you'll find one of those. So we create a funnel to you to, to put the carbon bicarbonate into the balloon by cutting the top off one of your bottles. Not just the top bit but the shoulders as well. But be very careful with the sharp knife, pen knife. Top off and you finish up with with a balloon, with a, a funnel suitable to fill the balloon. You don't actually need this bit, throw that away. So, so this is a funnel to put the bicarbonate into the balloon, and we have a funnel for putting the vinegar into the big bottle. Right. So we'll use this funnel for the for the liquid. It's got a narrow neck. Right, we put about an inch of vinegar and we went. Okay. That's enough? Yeah. Right, there we go. So we have the vinegar in one bottle. We now put the bicarb into the balloon. You do that by stretching the balloon over the top of your neck of the neck, neck of your bottle funnel. Okay. And then you put the put the bicarbonate soda about a about a half, well, a level teaspoon, no more than that, into the balloon. About that much. About that much? Yep. That goes into the balloon. 
And now we have all the ingredients we need. To make God the Father, God the Son, and most important, God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit. And you remove the balloon from the funnel. I'm having great difficulty on this occasion. There we go. So we now have balloon with the bicarb, bottle with the vinegar. Join the two together so that all comes together. You'll need two hands to two pairs of hands to do this. Somebody to hold the bottle. So we've now got a bottle, which is God with the vinegar in it. We've got the Holy Spirit being created by the bicarb of the soda. And all of it all get mixed together, and the soda blows up, it produces the gas, and blows the bottle, blows up the pressure in the bottle and pressure in the balloon. Now, if you've got a flexible, a very flexible balloon, a lightweight one, you might get a bigger ball, ball than that. But this is a very strong balloon, so the pressure inside isn't enough to blow it up into a big piece. But it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, who is actually the inspiration and the guiding force of God. Okay, well, you have a go at doing it, uh, but do be careful when you're using this sharp knife. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carrie and this is my son Jonah and today we're going to be making crunchy crocodile fruit skewers. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take a cucumber and if you get the adults to do this I'm going to try and cut a, a triangular shape at the front to um, to make a mouth. So I'm going to do that and in the meantime Jonah here is going to select some fruit. We've got um, pineapple and we've got grapes, um, strawberries and some raspberries, raspberries and a banana. Okay. And so Jonah here is going to cut them into small pieces. Okay, so we'll do you want to start that? Yep, yeah, I'll start. So I'll be making the fruit skewers. So cut the end and the front off. Okay, so we're making then some classics and slices maybe slightly thicker. So we cut them about this big and um, I expect the strawberries, have you cut those in half as well darling? Yes. Yeah. And okay, thank you. Then I just borrow this knife. I should have got this. And now I'm just going to move all of that to the side quickly. Sorry, right. I'm just going to cut this. What we'll do is while we're doing that, if you cut them. those. So I've cut that like this into to make a sort of a mouth for the crocodile. So we're going to carry on, we're going to cut the fruit and then we'll be back. Hi, we're back. And now I'm going to show you how you make a fruit skewer. So first grab your skewer, then pick any fruit you want. I'm going to use pineapple to put that one through. Then put my strawberry through that I want. And now I'm going to put some banana through. Mm. That's how I make a fruit skewer. Now I'm going to add that to the pile. And what we've done, just to save time, um, is so I've cut the cucumber into a mouth shape and then with the rest of the cucumber that, that little bit that I cut out, I've made some feet. So we'll put that to the side. We've made a tongue shape out of a carrot, which will go in there and then Jonas puts two grapes on the end of the little sticks and, and we've made box. lots of other a plate full of skewers fruit skewers well, here so in the eyes. that's the grapes so and this is what it turned out like two big blobs for the great boys and we just got some bits of the cucumber here for the legs. So should we, Jenna, should we put the, um, put, 
Should we start sticking the fruit skewers in? Yes. So if we give it a little bit of a should go in like this, you see, and then make the scales of the crocodile. It takes a bit of a push to put them in, doesn't it? Yeah. That's why you want a teep end. Oh. Oh. You're squashing your mum. I know, they're all falling off actually. Let's see if we can push them in. There we are. Oh. Does that one through? That one's a bit. Yeah. Shall I yeah. help? Oh, yeah. It's okay. a bit wobbly. Needs a bit of a push there. Bit force. And then his tongue's fallen out. We mm have -hmm. to put that back in. And I'm just going to put so his little really legs. Really wedge your tongue in there. Around there, like that. And there we have it. What do you think of that? Brilliant. Look at that. That is our crunchy crocodile fruit skewer design. Yeah? And <laughs> yeah, you can eat the remainder of the fruit. Jenna loves fruit. Um, thanks for joining us. And I, I really hope that you enjoy um, making one of these at home. And um, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Mm. Uh, bye! <laughs>
three or four lemons in its life, but this is where a lemon would normally come from. Why I've chosen a lemon is, it's got lots of things about it. We often associate it with being really sharp, really tangy, uh, even acidic. But when we use it, it's often used as a natural cleanser. But the thing that I like about it is that it's really refreshing. And I think that's a really good use of a fruit. Okay, we're in the kitchen and I've got my ingredients here for the lemonade. I've got my lemons, there should be four lemons. I've got some uh, my 175 grams of sugar and I've got hands full of ice. And there's some water if you need to add that to make it a little bit more dilute. I've started cutting up my lemons. They need to be cut up into about eight pieces. And you'll see that I'm just using it on a board. And this might be something that needs to be done by a parent. So I'll just finish off cutting that one up. All of these pieces of lemon will need to go into either a food processor or a blender. I'm going to use this, it's going to be noisy when it works, so be ready for that. So, in go these pieces of lemon. I'm going to put half the sugar in for this first part, and I'm just going to tip it in and leave it in there with that. Put a little bit of the water in, just enough, just to give it a little bit of moisture. And I'm going to get a handful of ice cubes. Let's get one more. And this is where it's going to be the noise a bit. Put the lid on. And again, this might be something you need to have parents help with. And we're just going to blitz up all the ingredients. <laughs> Okay, what I did here was I took out a couple bits of the ice and put more water in and that made it become much more of a liquid so it'll be ready to strain now. So all I'm going to do is take the lid off and I'm going to move my ball and collect the strainer and I'm going to tip it in so that we get the liquid straining through. And what we'll be left with is the pulp in the top. So it's just come through like a, a liquid in there. And this is pr process is just going to be repeated with the pulp uh, in the back into the blender. So I'm just taking out as much liquid, doesn't matter if I don't take it all out, but um, it will help for the mixing to have a little bit more taken out. So I leave that like that and all I'm going to do with my spoon is put it back into my blender. Oh, would be better if it's on the bottom. And I'm just going to repeat exactly what I've done before. And I'll put it back on top. I'll put in a few bits of ice cube, not as much this time. And I'm going to put in some more water. I'll add my rest of my sugar. And we're ready to blitz again. The lid goes back on. And here we go. Okay, well that's the second lot of blitzing done. So we've now got some more liquid which will need to be strained. Just to re-emphasise, I've probably put in two uh, jugs of this water and that was uh, 250 ml each time. And uh, just a, a couple of blocks of ice. So my final uh, piece of work is just to drain the pulp once again and then I should have some lemonade and then I can add some ice. So again, straining through and this one might take a bit longer because the pulp is actually uh, much finer and the liquid sits in it. So 
when that's done, and I'm just going to rush, I probably can do some uh, more draining there. As you can see, the liquid's coming through. I can then take my jug and tip it into my jug, which I'll probably have some ice cubes in, keep it nice and cool, and I'll pop it in there. Now, it, I can add more water if it's too strong, and I can keep draining, uh, straining if I want to make it a little bit stronger. So it's up to you. Enjoy your homemade lemonade. So welcome back, so to speak, and hope you really had a good time doing your activities this morning. I hope you've been able to make your fruity pick pears and play a game of picking your fruity, fruity pears. Uh, so thanks very much, Arthur and Sylvia, for doing that. And thanks particularly for telling us a bit about Galatia and uh, giving us a bit of insight to what Paul was saying to the Galatian people and why he was saying it. And I hope you've been able to make a fruit badge. I wonder what fruit you chose to make a badge of. I hope you followed Keith and Mary's guidance there and their directions. And uh, I'll be keen to see some of those badges when we have our, uh, our Zoom meeting later on today. And uh, Liz and Colin, well, that was fantastic. Bit of science there. Absolutely brilliant. Filling up those balloons with... Uh, well, I can't remember what gas it was anyway, but it, a bit like being filled with the Holy Spirit. Great stuff. And that crop crunch looked absolutely terrific. I hope you've been able to make something like that. You might have eaten it already, or you might be saving it for later. Hope you've enjoyed that. Hope you're going to enjoy eating it. And Frank and Philip are brilliant work with the Holy Spirit colouring sheets. And it'd be really good if, again, we could see those maybe later on when we have the Zoom meeting at four this afternoon. And lovely Sue's lovely lemonade. Well, I hope you've been able to make that. We were thinking, because this was, uh, we're recording this just at the end of a very hot week. We were thinking that would be really good in hot weather. And then of course today it's tipping it down with rain and it's thunder and lightning. So it's feeling a bit cold. But lemonade's nice any day of the week and in any weather in my book. So I hope you really, really enjoyed doing those activities. Now, Ruth and I are going to have a bit of a chat because Ruth gave us the reading this morning. And who wrote that reading originally, Ruthie? It was Paul. Paul, Paul wrote that reading in a letter to the Galatians. He wrote it in letter. So the Galatians. Now, Arthur and Sylvia told us that Galatians were people who lived in modern day Turkey. And, and you said that they were up to all sorts of no good. What were they doing that wasn't good? They were being really unkind to each other, Robin. Okay. They'd been, they'd been not listening, really, to what Paul had been telling them right. originally. And originally he'd been saying to them that they needed to love each other, just as Jesus had told them that they should love each other. And they just simply weren't. They were, they were being pretty wicked towards each other, if I'm honest. And, and to, get, to get this right, so you were saying that he said that they had to grow fruits... Is that right? They had to grow fruits? Yeah, well, it's not actual fruits as in bananas and pears. So they didn't have to grow sort of like a bit of goodness no, out no, of their no, arm no, or out of their of finger? A, no, that's not, it does, I don't think that's how it works, Robin. I think okay. what he's trying to say to them is that they need to develop a better relationship with God in order to be able to, to grow those fruits within them. Right, so these fruits, what were these fruits? Can you remember them? Well... If not, have you got a cheat sheet that I, might I, have them listed down? I can have down? a go, right? Okay. I can have a go. I think there's nine altogether. You're right there. There's nine. So, uh, there's love. Yeah. There's peace. Yeah. Joy. Yeah. Gentleness. Yeah. Generosity. Yeah. Faithfulness. Yeah. 
Self-control. Self-control. That one always, always, oh. I know I know what patience is because I haven't got any patience. And I know what joy is because I know what it's like to feel, faith, uh, feel joyful. Self-control. What does that mean, Ruthie? Self-control is about look, looking out and making sure that you don't say the right, the wrong thing to, to somebody oh, or potentially take the wrong action. Just being a bit more responsible for your own actions and making okay. sure you don't lose your temper with people. Oh, that is a tricky one. That is a tricky, that is a tricky one. one. I, I have to say that is one of the difficult fruits for me. I, I know what you mean. So when somebody jumps in the queue in front of you at the supermarket or something like that, you don't lose your rag, you, you, bite, your tongue, you bite your tongue, and you, you, you're in control of your feelings. You are. Okay, thank you for that. There were a couple more, I think, that, that you... Or have we got kindness? Did I kindness. Say kindness? Kindness. I'm not sure, but you have now, so that's good. Kindness and... Uh, let me just cut off. Yeah, no, I've use your cheat eight. sheet. I've got use eight. your cheat sheet. So which one did I miss out? Which one did Faithfulness. You? Faithfulness. 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 That's the other one. Faithfulness. So that's nine altogether. Nine altogether. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. And why do you think he used the term fruits then? If it's not something that we grow out of our body, why did he use the word fruits? Well, I think he was looking for, uh, it was kind of like an analogy. It was He was trying to get people to picture something, right. I think, in their mind. Okay. And you see a fruit and it might look, it's a sort of nice thing, isn't it? Oh, it is. A nice tasty strawberry it or a nice certainly tasty is. banana. Yeah. Maybe he was thinking that. Or maybe he was um, thinking about the, the, the theme of growing something. Yeah. Because actually that's what happens, isn't it? It grows inside you. Okay. The fruit of the spirit grows inside you. So it's to do with growing and oh, yeah, and tastiness it's... and nice and nice goodness. goodness. And yeah, yeah, yeah. excellent stuff. Things. So, of all these, of all these, which is the best thing? Love. Do you think? Love is the best. Right. Which is the second best? Which is the second best? Uh, okay, peace. Peace. Which is the worst thing? Which is the worst? I don't. Well, I don't know any worst one, but the one that's most difficult has got to be self-control. Self-control, most about. difficult. But is it the worst one? The worst one. Do you think he had a pecking order um, with these? I don't think. I don't know. Whether, that's a very good question, isn't it? Did he? That's just, why I asked Did it. he set them out like that, <laughs> or did he? Perhaps he. Perhaps he did have a, a pecking, because love comes first. It does come first. It's at the very beginning, and of course Jesus said that, didn't he? He did. Jesus said, love you, love God, yeah. and love your neighbour. So okay. maybe that's why he put love first. Right, okay. But, right, and how do we get to grow these fruits then? Well, I think that's about our relationship with God, isn't it? Don't you think? And praying. Right. Don't you think we have to pray? I think it's two-sided. I think you have to pray, pray for... God's Holy Spirit to come into you and to grow within you. Yeah. But also, you have to think about things that you do every day as you go along. And then when you, something goes badly wrong, or you lose yeah. your temper with the shopping trolley lady in yeah. Sainsbury's. Could have been a bloke. Go, could have been a bloke. Could have been. Yeah. Could have been a bloke. Anyway, whoever's pushing that trolley, you might lose your patience. Yeah. And you might just... Look back on your day, and you might think actually that was not a good thing. Yeah. You might not have had an opportunity to say sorry to the lady or the gentleman yeah. at Sainsbury's, but you can say sorry to God. Yeah, that's and a good then point. hopefully just reflect a little bit more carefully on your day as you go. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. Maybe the more you reflect and think about those things, the more you can grow those spirit, fruitful spirits inside you. Yeah. I can remember someone telling me once that, that, you know, because it's fruit and fruit grows on plants and trees, it, it, the, this person commented that you never see a tree struggling to grow a fruit. You know, I've got an apple tree in my garden and I never see it going, I want to get an apple on the end of my branch. What the trees do is spend all their energy, all their time in pushing out their roots. And if they get their roots down and into good soil and they're getting all the nourishment coming up then the fruit just comes naturally and I think your point is right there that our focus should be on getting our roots right which is getting our relationship with God and with each other right and then this fruit just comes yeah oh, that's the hope so that is, that is. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that, Ruthie. That's all right. Thank you. It's so I hope. To have a chat with you. 
you, Robin. Very <laughs> nice. Very nice. It's a lot easier than doing the talk normally. Thank you very much for You're that. Welcome. So I hope you've enjoyed Ruth and I's little chat and I hope you found that beneficial. We're going to sing a song now, which is really all about us being Jesus' eyes and ears and hands to help others. So looking at having our relationship with Jesus and then seeing that flow out in the way we help others and the way we're kind to others. Let me be your eyes, Lord Jesus. So maybe you'd like to stand up and we'll sing our song. enjoyed singing that song really good song I do love that one so well done everybody with the song now we're going to say a special prayer for today this prayer is on the notice sheet that you've been given so let's be quiet and if you want let's close our eyes as we just talk with God loving God please forgive us when we are unkind to each other and hurt other people's feelings help us to listen to you and learn to love everyone as you love us and we love you. We pray that the fruit of the Spirit will grow in us and that we will grow in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now, as we always do at Messy Church, we're going to say together the prayer that Jesus taught his friends. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Excellent. So, to finish up, we're just in a minute going to say our messy grace. But before that, just remind you that this afternoon at four o'clock, we've got a Zoom catch up so everyone can join. We can share with each other what we've done in Messy Church today. And we can just have a chat and a drink and maybe a biscuit or something like that. Or maybe a crock crunch if you've still got it. And then don't forget, next month, again September, we're going to be online again. And that is going to be Messy Harvest. So hope loads of you can join us for the fourth Sunday of September when we do Messy, Church, messy Harvest. So uh, before we uh, say Messy Grace together, just to say I hope you've enjoyed today and I hope that all of you stay very safe and very well. Now then, let's stand up and get ready to say Messy Grace together. Okay, you ready? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.